characters. Cool and breezy, high 50s for this one. There's rain in the forecast, but the biggest rain coming tomorrow. That's the game that is in question right now. Whether or not we'll get that 140 game in tomorrow. We're all set to go here for game two of this series, and the Dodgers lineup gets ready to bat. Brought to you by Honda. Chris Taylor hits leadoff for the Dodgers for the first time this year. Then it's Seeger and Turner. With the left-hander on the mound, Franklin Gutierrez bats cleanup. Then Cody Bellinger and Kike Hernandez. Quick the seven hitter Austin Barnes catches Clayton Kershaw for the first time and they face Clayton Richard and only the second matchup of Clayton's in Major League history. The other one was these two guys as well a few years back. Nomar the guy or the Dodgers faced this guy second game of the year and he fired eight shutout innings against him. Yeah he only gave up five hits and all of them were singles. The Dodgers didn't even get a guy in scoring position couldn't get a guy to reach second base in that game. And when he comes at you, it's interesting. His against right handed batters this year, they're hitting 337. And we all know the struggles that Dodgers have had versus lefties. So we'll see if the Dodgers can come up big against him. He's kind of like Jolis Chassin. He's got a good tailing fastball, slider, uh, induces over 65% ground balls, highest in the majors. And off we go with Taylor taking ball one. That was the second day of the year when he shut the Dodgers out. He's not been particularly dominant other than that though with an ERA above four His 1 0 is low on Taylor two balls and no strikes. You mentioned his struggles against right handed hitters and so Dave Roberts loads up the lineup with six of them. A 2 0 ball three. Lead off for the first time this year for Taylor and only the second time in his career. Lead off one time for the Mariners in 2015. The guy that hit behind him, Franklin Gutierrez. Strike one. But I tell you, for Chris Taylor, and I'm sure he would say the same thing, he's a different player than he was back there in 2015. He knew coming in to this year. Walks to start things off. This year he knew he was making an adjustment. He talked about it at spring training. It's always good to have a great spring training when you're coming in to make adjustments, to have that confidence that what you did in the offseason is working. He gets sent down to AAA. He's having success down there, then gets called up and has been a huge impact here for the Dodgers. Obviously limited ABs, but his on base percentage is now close to 500. And just off the bench as a pinch hitter, four for seven as a pinch hitter with four RBIs. Corey Seeger now swings at the first one and singles into center. A walk and a single before Richard records an out. Two on, nobody out. Here comes Justin Turner. So Corey Seeger, what I. You know he swings at the first pitch we know how aggressive he is but what I like is even on the first pitch he's not looking to pull he just takes that ball right back up the middle he's looking for something and is aggressive in that spot. Turner two hits last night now hits in 18 of his last 20 games. Continues to deal with some soreness in that calf from when he was hit a few nights back against San Francisco. Richard deals and Turner takes ball one. Turner and the Dodgers have won six of eight. Start action tonight two games back in the West behind the Rockies and a game and a half behind the Diamondbacks. Those two teams playing this weekend. Padres meanwhile have dropped three in a row after winning three straight early on in this homestand. Two balls no strikes. It's good to see Justin Turner in there. I mean, he's obviously not 100%. You won't see him really running really hard. Let's not forget he got hit in the calf a few games ago. And even yesterday, he was kind of running gingerly, being careful. Two and one. 
In last night's game he was on first base and there was a ground ball and he was hustling over to second slid into second base and that one made me a little nervous I and mean, here's one where he gets a base hit but watch him just kind of taking it easy. This is one where if he's feeling OK where he might turn into a double. And there we saw that that was when he was actually sliding into second later in the game he was just he knew he had to take it up a notch to try to get there to beat a possible throw to second base. But the fact that he's in there today. Shows like all right he may be dealing with it but he was OK to play there it is where they wanted to come check him out last night. Working with a two and two count with two on and nobody out here in the first. And time is called. Day game tomorrow which we mentioned is in question whether or not that will get played with the coming rain so. Figure Dave Roberts perhaps one way or another will get Justin Turner rest tomorrow. Bouncing ball to second should be two. There's one and two. Four, six, three, two out. Taylor goes to third. Well, we talked about coming in here about Clayton Richard. Over 65% ground ball ratio in the big leagues the highest in the big leagues and also has induced the most double plays as well just added another one and with that one pitch has himself an out away from getting out of this inning as Franklin Gutierrez comes up see the numbers in yellow Gutierrez has tormented Richard takes a first pitch slider for a strike nine of 18 with a home run. That's one home run this year came earlier this week in his first a B back from the DL. One and one. Injured his hamstring in the opening road trip of the year in Chicago on a really cold night. So they didn't want to risk it in a cold series that was a four game set want to risk bringing him back right away. Took their time getting him ready and he's 100 percent here. On one one Gutierrez swings through it one and two. Speaking of that injury for Gutierrez I thought yesterday was a good sign when Tolles hit that double in the gap and he had to come around and score from first. Used to be a burner early in his career it was a gold glove center fielder. Strike three called and Richard dances around some first inning traffic. Dodgers at first and second nobody out but no run score and here comes Kershaw. Opportunity in the first, and now the Padres come to bat with a starting lineup brought to you by Honda. Manny Margot has settled in as their everyday leadoff man. Corey Spangenberg plays third, bats second. 
Will Myers has been their top hitter. The three hitter and first baseman, Salarte, Hedges, and Renfro in the middle third with Blash and Sardinas in front of Richard. Clayton Kershaw makes his seventh start of the season, and on Monday was not his typical dominant self. Four runs on eight hits over six innings, but had a line just like that earlier this year at Colorado and followed that up with his best start. Yeah, after that one, and we talked about it earlier that after a loss, he is 22 and four with an ERA just under two. We know he's a competitor. We know each and every time he has an outing, he's never satisfied and comes back with vengeance. First one to Margot is over the inside half, strike one. And Kershaw has faced the Padres this year. Opening day held him to two runs, only one was earned on two hits over seven innings. Quickly, nothing in two. You mentioned about after his first loss. Yeah, that next game was against the Arizona Diamondbacks, and that's when he went eight and a third and only allowed one earned run. How about his record in his career following a loss? 22 and four. Margot starts this one with a single to center. One thing I'll be looking at for today's game is really that slider for Clayton Kershaw. Usually his best pitch, that's his go to pitch, but it's been the one that's been hit relatively well this year as compared to years past. And that's something that even though if it's getting hit or even though it doesn't feel right for Clayton Kershaw, he still he'll still keep using it. Here's Spangenberg. One of two left handed hitters that Kershaw will face in this lineup tonight strike one the only other one is the pitcher Clayton Richard. You mentioned the slider. Coming into the season, opponents against Kershaw's slider in his career were hitting around 150. This year, hitting above 250 off of the slider. Is a one. Crack to the left side. Seeger juggles and has no play. That's a base hit for Spangenberg. Two on and nobody out. Pitch was down and away. It wasn't a bad pitch. As a matter of fact, it wasn't hit very well either off the end of the bat, broken bat. And I think because it was off the end, it had a weird spin on it. it took a weird bounce on Corey Seeger. That's why he wasn't able to come up with it. So, like the Giants did on Monday, the Padres mounting something in the first inning against Kershaw, who has owned Will Myers, one for 18. With eight strikeouts against Kershaw. Ball one. Those numbers aside, he's been San Diego's best hitter this year. Of 300. Tied for the team lead with seven homers. Here in the first year of a long term contract. Signed an extension this offseason, six years. Climbs the ladder to get it, one and one. It's a franchise record deal that he signed. 83 million over those six seasons. Rewarded for finally staying healthy last year for the first time. He dealt with so many injuries the first few years of his career. Rookie of the year in 13, but then a wrist injury that lingered for a couple of years. One and two. Go at second. Spangenberg at first, and nobody out here in the first inning. As Kershaw comes up for the one two. Ball two. Padres have struggled in these situations mightily. They were 0 for 11 in the finale against the Rockies two days ago, and that one then went 1 for 7 yesterday with runners in scoring position.
Kershaw to Myers with a 2 2 and a fly ball to center. No big deal for Kike Hernandez. Sets his feet, makes the catch. Here's the throw to third. Margot is out. Kike Hernandez with a missile from center. Textbook. Watch Kike get around this ball, shuffling to the side, getting himself and his body squared to make a good, strong, and accurate throw to third base. That was perfect getting behind that ball and a great exchange, a quick exchange with a cannon to third. Looks like he's been watching Yasiel Puig a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And Margot, folks, is one of the fastest runners in the National League. So it's up to Solarte. Spangenberg took second on that play. And Solarte takes strike one. Very similar top and bottom here in the first. Both teams had two on and nobody out. Dodgers couldn't cash in. Kershaw now away from ensuring the Padres experienced the same fate. Pulled to third and caught by Turner. Back to back singles open the inning, but the defense helps Kershaw out, and after one, no score. Cody Bellinger sent the lead off the second for the Dodgers in a scoreless game. The sun even poking out here at Petco and really I think probably the first time today that the sun has showed its face. It might be the last time this weekend. Richard delivers and Bellinger takes ball one. Look at the Coors Light cold hard fact. And there have been plenty of good facts to share about Cody in his first 10 games in the majors. Another two home run game for him last night. Ball and a strike. First player in franchise history as far back as the records go to 1913, as you saw in that graphic, to have two home runs twice in his first 10 games. Two and one. What impressed you most yesterday in that two homer game it was really his second home run. I mean, he's facing a guy who throws who averages 95 96 miles an hour in Diaz. And it was a 1 1 count and he takes it to center field. I mean, we know he has power. You know we have pull power. We saw that in his first home run. He was in a hitters count and he pulled it. But that one just 1 1 staying on it and taking it and driving it to center field. That was really impressive. And walks to start the second. And you're seeing pitchers be more and more careful as he develops more and more of a reputation. But you know the league will adjust. The league always finds holes in people's swings. It'll be his 
task to adjust back to it. And that's really the key, and that's what's really telling. It's not always just the success because we can all ooh and all over the success, and that's great. But it's when the struggles happen, and you'll notice struggles, and then how quickly he gets out of them. Kike Hernandez, fresh off his outfield assist last inning. Trying to get it going offensively. He's two for his last 21. Shows bunt, takes a strike. So Hernandez starting in center tonight. Instead of Jock Peterson with the left handed pitcher up there. When Kike has been right, he's been really good against lefties. Just low, ball on a strike. Andrew Tolls getting the night off out of the starting lineup as well. Gutierrez starting in left. The 1 1. Hernandez drags it foul, 1 and 2. A throw that Hernandez made at the bottom of the first inning. Spot on. Right when that ball was hit, I was just watching his feet, watching his body get behind it and make a perfect throw. Take strike three. Didn't like it from Toby Bassner, the home plate umpire, but he's the second strikeout victim of the game of Richard. Up comes Puig. Couple of infield singles last night in the 8 2 Dodger win. Shows bunt, takes a strike. When look at the Land Rover performance spotlight on Puig, who has been really good against San Diego. Had the three home runs in the opening series of the year. They didn't leave the infield, but still counted for the batting average. Those two singles last night. Helped the Dodgers explode in the late inning. Seven runs over the last three innings last night. After they trailed that game 2 1. With Bellinger at first and one away. Here's an 0 1. Puy cracks his bat and a bouncer to short. Sardina steps on the bag and throws in one motion for the second double play in as many innings. Layton Richard is good as anybody at generating them.
find out if you're a Dodgers good luck charm. And I'm sure all of you are. And purchase a five game weekend plan starting at $20 per ticket. If the Dodgers win all five of the games you pick, you'll win two tickets to Fan Appreciation Day September 24th and be recognized in a group photo on the field. For more information, visit Dodgers.com slash mini plans. Got the coats out tonight with the temperature in the 50s. No score, bottom two, and Austin Hedges to lead off this inning against Clayton Kershaw. Starts him with a fastball, strike one. Hedges won for his last 16. It has been an odd year for him. Started the year 0 for 24. And as soon as coaches saw something on video that they wanted him to adjust, wanted him to get his hands moving sooner. Nothing in two. That's when things started to click for a while. He had six home runs in a nine game stretch. Hit 300 over a few weeks. But has now gone into this one for 16. And on 0 2, protects. This game's hard. Mm -hmm. It really is. And that's. That's what I was talking about. I know we were talking about Cody Bellinger with a hot start he has, but it's really about those. Everybody's going to go through the struggles and those slumps. It's a matter of being able to minimize them, making the adjustment as quickly as possible. And that's a tough thing for a batting coach. A batting coach is going, okay, what is that one thing I may have to tweak, or what is that one thing I can tell him to have that confidence when he's stepping into the box? Because when you're in a slump, that's the first thing to go is your confidence. Somehow gets a piece of that curve and stays alive at one and two. Coaches said, look, it's just your hands are moving a little bit late. And he said, oh, okay. Good catch. That's easy. But it's not. Kershaw gets him. And use that slider. Take it under the bat for strike three, his first K. The other thing that's not easy is hitting Clayton Kershaw, and especially if he finally gets that slider down and in on the hands. That's where he wants it. We talked about that's where he's that's where when he's most effective with that slider, but he hasn't been able to get it there on a consistent basis over the course of this season so far, and he himself knows that. Hunter Renfro goes after the first pitch and fouls it off. Strike one. He's not had nearly as many swings and misses. Clayton Kershaw hasn't as he has in years past. Last year averaged 16 swings and misses per start. This year he's only averaged 11. He's home with an 0 1. And that's in the dirt one and one but perhaps a recipe to get back on track there is facing this lineup which swings and misses more than any other in baseball. One and two. Renfro probably the best example of that. He has struck out 16 times during a two for 28 slide. The one two took this one low and the count evens. Kershaw really working quickly. Back with a 2 2. Full count. I don't think we mind him working quickly after last night's oh. game. Or <laughs> you can say that again. I'm sure the team don't mind that either. Four hours, 11 minutes. It was by 11 minutes the longest nine inning game of the year in baseball. A missile down the left field line foul. It was the longest Padres game in franchise history. National League record four and a half hours happened last summer at Coors Field. A Rockies Diamondbacks game. He walks Renfro and the frustration boils over. So 
So one out base runner on only Kershaw's fourth walk of the season to go along with his 45 strikeouts. And now Jabari Blash. Ball one. Flash out of the Virgin Islands. Made his major league debut for the Padres last year. He was limited by injury. Two and all. Made the opening day roster though as a rule five selection. Padres had to have him on the roster throughout the season or they had to offer him back to the Seattle Mariners team that put him on waivers. Very strong a lot of power but a lot of holes in the swing. Kershaw tries to expose on 2 0 instead of toss to first. <laughs> I see Cody but Cody Bellinger over there see him with his hat as he was pushing it down you can see the suns you talk about the sun was peeking in. You can tell it's in the eyes over there and you got to be really aware especially on the pickoff move. There are certain stadiums it was the worst is Colorado. Colorado is one where the sun actually kind of goes down right behind third base and as a first baseman not only just a pickoff from your pitcher but even throws from your middle infielders from like your shortstop in the third base side. It's like you actually asked them to throw it in the dirt one hopper because the sun gets so bad. A two on the Blash. Grounded foul and it's two and two. Did you develop some tricks as you played more and more first base or? Just certain state and there is no trick. I mean yeah. the sun's there. There's nothing you can do about it. You pull your hat as far down as you possibly can. Maybe sometimes you crouch down a little bit to try to get a better angle. Sometimes you also have to let your pitcher know that too. Like listen I can't see over here so. If you're going to pick off. Be aware of that or tell them where you want them to throw it. Yeah, you've been warned. Full count on um, Blash. And the worst is Colorado. Like I said, it's so bad. I remember Todd Helton would talk about he was actually offered to build something like a building there to block <laughs> it. It's so I mean, it is that bad there and scary. He offered his own money. Yes, to he's like, I'll build it. And they said no, they wouldn't. And they were like, all right, well, this is what we got to deal with. Kershaw home with a 3 2, and Blash pulls another foul. So the Padres with three base runners over the first one and a third against Kershaw, two singles and a walk. And another full count here. Here comes Blash down swinging. Second K of the inning. Good location for Clayton Kershaw that ball down and in. That's what he was trying to do against Renfro and wasn't able to get it there and he was so frustrated with himself. So a man at first with two gone for Luis Sardinas out of the eighth spot. Spot duty for him this year lost out in the starting shortstop role to Eric Ibar. Kershaw spikes one in there. It's one and oh. Well, this can be said with just about any ballpark for Kershaw. You can find him among the best ever to pitch there. But among active left handers, he has the best ERA at Petco Park. That included opening day here last year. Sardinas cuts over it. It's one and one. Had seven shutout innings last opening day here. Gave up just one hit. And a blowout Dodger win. Part of a season that was on track to be one of the greatest ever pitched before he went down for the two months with a back. That's the one one fly. It's a curve, but it's low, and it's two and one. 
That was close. And Kershaw was upset at that one. Home plate umpire Toby Basner was telling him that it was away because it wasn't low. You know, pitch gas has a low, but that was a really good pitch. Coming inside on 2 1, and Sardinas flies it to center for Hernandez, who will coast under it and finish off the Padres in the second. Through it, too. No score. Joe Davis, Nomar Garcia Parra, Alana Rizzo, back here at Petco Park. Austin Barnes to lead off the inning against Clayton Richard, who misses downstairs with the first one. So Barnes catching Kershaw for the first time tonight. Caught him for one total inning a year ago. Swats one into right center, tailing away from Margot, and he took a bad angle. It gets all the way to the wall. Austin Barnes makes the turn and holds with a leadoff double. Great swing with Austin Barnes. That's really the area, if you're a right hander going against Clayton Richard with the ball tailing away, where he keeps the ball down, because you got to think about going the other way with it. You really can't pull it, pull off the ball, you end up rolling over. Watch him stay on this ball and just drive it over there to right center. Great approach, great swing. So the Dodgers with a man in scoring position for the pitcher Clayton Kershaw. Corners are squeezed in. Certain that'll be squaring. He does. And Richard turns to second trying to get him to show his hand which he had already done. Lays it down perfectly. This will be a tough play for Edges. He gets Kershaw by two steps. Is there anything he doesn't do well? Well, that just is taking pride in every aspect and understanding that if you go work on Bunny, laying it down as a pitcher, that you're only helping yourself out there on the hill, getting it done, getting the job done. And we know he likes to hit too. He can swing the bat. Yeah. RBI single yes. in his last start. Infield comes in with Chris Taylor up. Richard comes home and Taylor mm. fouls one off his leg. Strike one. Couldn't have felt good. Chris walked his first time here in his first game as the leadoff man in a couple of years and only his second. Time leading off in the majors. 
They do with Barnes at third and one away. The 0 1. Backs him away. Ball one. And as a hitter, when I know a pitcher that induces a lot of ground balls, he has a tendency to stay down in the zone. Well, this is a great example when I have a man on third base where it allows me to get the approach I really want, which is to try to get him up in the zone so I can get that fly ball. Two on one. Richard, 33 years old, the oldest player on this 40 man roster, which is the second youngest roster in baseball. Taylor with a cue shot foul, and it's two and two. Richard in his ninth big league season now, started his career with the White Sox. It's his second stint with the Padres. He was here in 2009 through 2013, acquired in the Jake Peavy deal from Chicago. And two years with the Cubs. Joined the Padres again late last year. Taylor down swinging. Richard gets a big strikeout. He just came right at him, and Taylor just unable to square that ball up. And it wasn't so much that last pitch that's frustrating. It was the pitch before that he fouled off that I guarantee you Taylor's upset because he think that was the pitch that he could have got in the air. So it's up to Seeger with Barnes at third and two gone. And Corey swings at the first pitch, comes up empty, strike one. Singled on the first pitch that he saw in the first inning. Oh one. Oh and two. Going outside with an 0 2. It's in the dirt and blocked by Hedges fantastically. One ball and two strikes. Hedges considered one of the top defensive catchers, one of the top young catchers in the game back there. Defense never been a question for him. It's been about the bat for him. Now the 1 2. Just outside, two balls, two strikes. Down swinging on a pitch that was off of the plate inside. So the Dodgers unable to take advantage of a leadoff double, and after two and a half, still no score.
senior athlete then nominate them for a chance to be named as Spectrum Sports Championship Drive Scholar Athlete receive a twenty five hundred dollar college scholarship. Go to SpectrumChamp.com now for more information. Back in San Diego still no score as Kershaw fires to Clayton Richard. Downstairs with a fastball one and oh. Richard a good hitter three hits this year. Really good athlete. It's two and oh. In fact, Clayton Richard went to Michigan on a football scholarship. He was Mr. Football and Mr. Baseball in Indiana. Two and one. Star high school quarterback. Lost out on the starting job to Chad Henney. And started to focus on baseball. Two and two. What position was he in football? Was quarterback. Quarterback. Yep. I, was, I was thinking he was a wide receiver because he doesn't strap, you know, use the Velcro on his batting gloves right there because you see a lot of wide receivers in the NFL do that same thing. Right. So. Kershaw strikes him out to open the third. It's odd seeing a pitcher wear three like Richard does, but that was his number as a high school quarterback. Wide receivers, defensive backs, they're the ones who don't. No, I know. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Third Kershaw strikeout. Here's Manny Margot. One of the two hits against Kershaw over the first two innings. Pops this one up and foul ground. Barnes over late and no play. Barnes catching Kershaw for the first time in his starting role. He caught three outs last year. Is that, a, is that an underrated or overrated thing and working with a new catcher? I don't think it's overrated. I think there is some comfort between a pitcher and a catcher. Margot buzzes it right past Kershaw, but Taylor position well. Two out. And I think with a with a pitcher, you know, when you're comfortable with a catcher and you go over your game plan, as we have another look at how close this ball actually came to hitting Kershaw, and every Dodger fan could breathe a sigh of relief there that it didn't hit him. But at the same time, I think there are times when you're on the hill as a pitcher, and you might be be on the same plan as your catcher, but you might have some doubts on certain pitches. And then the catcher puts down a certain sign. It's like it just reassures you, like, yeah, this is the proper pitch. So, and if there's somebody new, you might say maybe he's not calling the right one, or I might have doubt. But when you have someone on a regular basis, you have a tr you trust them a whole lot more. Ball on a strike on Spangenberg. He of course had that with AJ Ellis. Oh, yeah. He, right now is also just trying to look to see how often he maybe either Boston has to switch his signs or Kershaw. There you go right there. You know a couple of pitches going through a couple of them. Curve drops in one and two as compared to just there's that one pitch with both. Yep. That's it. That's the one I'm putting down. Get ready to go. Gets him swinging. Kershaw with his fourth K through three scoreless innings on to the fourth in San Diego.
Sportsnet LA is brought to you by the Ram 1500 Rebel. Experience the power and toughness of Ram at your local dealer. And by Jack in the Box. Try the double jack combo for just $4.99. Only at Jack in the Box. No score. Back in San Diego. Top of the fourth inning. And Justin Turner to lead off against Clayton Richard. Who delivers a first pitch strike. So the Dodgers shut out against Richard the first time they saw him. Eight innings. Yeah, without anything through three so far today. Turner pokes it foul and it's 0 2. They've had their chances though. They definitely have. I mean, they've had their 0 for 4 runners in scoring position against Clayton Richard. And Clayton Richard this season, the runners in scoring position, they're hitting 345 off of him, which is the 10th worst in the league. Working on Turner to start the fourth. Missing away, ball one. Mentioned he's the oldest on the 40 man roster. Opening day at Dodger Stadium. He bought 24 copies of a Dr. Seuss book and put them in everybody's locker. Fouled off, still one and two. Got him, oh, the places you'll go, and took sticky notes and wrote wheel instead of Yule and put it on there. So the places will go and wrote a personalized message in each one. Trying to deliver the message that it's about the journey. A one two. Turner hits it foul again. Wanted his guys to enjoy the process one day at a time and. They'd be happy at the end as long as they did that. Knowing that this was probably a rebuilding year for such a young team. He was brought in on a one year contract and the veteran most member of the team. Home with another one two. Turner dumps this one back as well. A couple weeks ago he got the team another gift. Got this idea he was laying in bed and his power went out and sometimes you know that can zap you awake. So he's laying in bed. And he gets this idea about an upcoming road trip where they have to take an overnight flight from Atlanta back to San Diego. Not going to get in until 3 a.m. So he bought everybody pajamas for the trip. Two and two. Something he learned while he was with the Cubs. Joe Madden was big on theme road trips. And he liked the camaraderie that that helped develop. Turner making him work to lead off the fourth. Here's a 2 2. And he pulls a base hit to left. That is a professional at bat from Justin Turner for a leadoff single. Justin Turner fighting off some tough pitches. Clayton Richard making some good pitches, staying in there, finally getting one where he hangs over the middle of the plate, stays on it, squares it up. And that's as we look at our Carl's cam replay and he. Nice leadoff single. Let's see if the Dodgers can capitalize on this one. Turner did it on the eighth pitch of the AB after he fouled off four. So now Gutierrez. Backdoor breaking pitch strike one. Dodgers have had the leadoff man on in all four innings. Walks in the first and the second, a double last inning, and now a single. Oh, and two. Good stop by Austin Hedges, and it's one and two. Have the overshift on, which will make it more difficult to turn a double play with a ground ball machine on the mound. Which is interesting, yeah. which is one of the things that I, I go, I know what the stats say, and we see these charts, and we see so many shifts, but when you have a guy that's leading the NL in double plays, inducing double plays, that you would at least make it a little bit easier or a bit more conventional. 
I can understand maybe the second baseman being over on the second base side. Okay, you can play your shortstop to pull. He's induced two double plays over the first three innings. Be tough two here though. A 2 2 and Gutierrez flips it down the right field line foul. And I'll tell you what though. The new rules. Which I can't stand. Uh, as far as sliding into second base. Uh -huh. Does make it easier. For a second baseman or even a shortstop to kind of be out of position and go over there. To, so you're not as scared that they're going to come and kill you and take you out to left field. That you can say okay I can come at a different awkward angle maybe not be in the best position. But I can at least get there and possibly turn. Full count. Yeah, you're not a fan of that. I, uh, I can't that stand rule, it. Right? No. So that's Salarte, the second baseman, playing where the shortstop normally plays. Here comes a 3 2, and Gutierrez takes inside. That's ball four. And the Dodgers have the first two on in the fourth. It's too good at bats because you mentioned about Justin Turner on the eighth pitch getting a base hit. Gutierrez was 0 and 2, and he was able to work a walk. And the Dodgers did this in the first inning, they had it in the third inning where they had a man on second, nobody out. We're, not, we're unable to score. Yep, 15 pitches to your point there, Nomar. They worked against Richard to put the first two on. And Bellinger to the plate. Again, an overshift. Bellinger pokes one against it in the left center field. Justin Turner heads for the plate. RBI single. Cody Bellinger, 1 0 Dodgers. Different night, same story for the kid. Right when you mentioned the overshift, I was wondering. I've, we've seen this in the big leagues. We're seeing this overshift, even on a guy who has a small sample size. It's his 11th game in the big leagues, and we've seen him go the other way. We've seen him pull a ball foul 400 feet and then hit it the left field line for a base hit and RBI. And that one, I think the overshift got him. We talked about once again a guy on the hill who induces double plays. If you played regular, that was a double play ball. Yep. But for the Dodgers, they benefit. Still nobody out. Gutierrez went first to third, so at the corners for Kike Hernandez, who foul tips it, strike one. Yeah, you mentioned the uh, the back-to-back -back pitches where Bellinger went upper tank at Dodger Stadium, foul down the right field line, and then tripled into the left field corner. Sometimes you'll see that happen where a guy is so far out in front that he'll then cue it. He didn't cue that triple. Hit it on the barrel one pitch after he barreled it up to an extreme I mean, pole. It, it wasn't. I mean it wasn't down the right field foul. It was behind the dugout yeah. almost like almost a corner. The far end corner of the dugout 400 feet in the upper deck at Dodger Stadium. That's how much he pulled it and squared that up and then going the other way. So the Dodgers have the game's first run and an opportunity for a big inning here. Hernandez lines it to short. Sardinas picks it off for the first out. Right here for the Dodgers. They got to find some way to get that second run across the board. Because for Clayton Richard, if he's able to get out of this inning with just giving up one run, you know, that's a victory for him. Seven base runners for the Dodgers through three plus, but only one run. Off of the Bellinger RBI single. He's at first with Gutierrez at third, and Puig shows bunt, takes a ball. Perhaps a safety squeeze put on. Gutierrez is working his way down the line and had to dive back into the bag with that pitch missing. One and one. Actually didn't mind the idea by Yasiel thinking about bunning over there because he already he's already hit into one double play. We talked about Clayton Richard. 
Well, he's the best in the National League at inducing them. Not a bad idea. Now they throw down to third. It hits mm -hmm. Gutierrez. He'll come in to score. Two nothing Dodgers the second time this year they've gotten a run and a throw down to third that's ricocheted off a runner. I don't know what the attempt for that one it was an interesting attempt there and Gutierrez did everything right as far as taking the secondary and then coming back into the baseline see where he is right there see that's exactly kids back home that's how you get back to third base. Three and one on Puig for that exact reason because it cuts off the angle from a possible pickoff from the catcher. Three and two runner took off it's Bellinger stealing third. Now Cody Bellinger gets his first career stolen base. Good read by Cody Ballinger. Tremendous jump. And now it causes the infield to come in. Creates more holes. Also possible fly ball for a sack fly. Quig lifts it but it's foul. So two on the bank here in the fourth with Bellinger at third and one out. A three and two count on the OCL Puig. Another. And the Dodgers up and down the order this time through have made Richard really earn things. Dave Roberts, San Diego kid. Back in his hometown here, hoping the Dodgers can win the first two games of this series. Another 3 2, and Puig lines the ball to center. Margot comes on, plays it on a bounce. Bellinger scores on an RBI single from Puig. And Cody doesn't score on that unless he steals third base. Because that ball you would have to freeze at second. There's no way you'd been able to come out around. Yasiel, after fighting off some tough pitches, is able to get that ball out to center field. Wasn't well hit, kind of got it off the end, but good placement. So a 3 0 lead. And Austin Barnes to the plate. You know, we were talking about. Oh, that's not the first time that's happened with a runner getting hit by a throw down at third and you talked about it being textbook. It's not a mistake that it's happened multiple times for this team. Something that they talk about during spring training. A couple of looks at first Puig back in Bob Guerin is somebody who is a rules aficionado and one of the rules he talks about is you know you hear about guys going quote unquote out of the base path. As long as you don't veer out of the base path, as long as you establish your own base path wherever you want it, as long as you don't veer out of it, it's legal. So if Gutierrez changes directions halfway up the base path, turns around and heads back to third, he can go as far inside as he wants as long as that's where he begins. That's exactly right. A lot oftentimes I think about they say at home or kids at home will say he's out of the baseline. Barnes a base hit to left. And that's why even umpires will tell you no, he's, he hasn't established it just yet. 
And once he's established, so let's say you have somebody in a rundown, sometimes you're going, how, how did he get around that? Wasn't he out of the baseline? Depends on when they started and when they tagged him. Had he established it when he turned around and then moved out of the way? Then that's when they keep the umpire's rule of thumb is kind of almost like an arm's length right or left once they establish that mm -hmm. line. But like you said, it's there is no set line. It's the runner is actually establishing. It could be, you know, five steps behind second base as if he's going to third, wherever it may be. It can be 10 steps. As long as you don't turn out of it once you establish it. So that's why you see the runners down at third establishing on the inside part of the base path making that throw difficult from home. Kershaw's up there with men at first and second showed bunt took a ball. Successful sacrifice his first time. Padres think he'll do the same here with the leadoff man Chris Taylor do next. And you have Will Myers at first base really playing about halfway. Look how close he is. They are really anticipating the bunt. Kershaw pulls it back, swings and misses. That has to be so scary as a corner infielder. And he was and he was trying to pull that ball. Yeah. That's one of those where you're going, you're telling your pitcher, okay, listen, I am in. I know he's a lefty, but can you try to keep that ball away? Because that's going to be a harder one to pull. Don't yeah. throw it in on him. Please. Bunts through at one and two. You have any moments that stand out in your first base career of close calls? Not that one that I recall. I remember at not somebody that I just remember some guys who hit the ball just hard at me over there at the first base or at third base when I sure. was there in the corner compared to short. It would just eat me up. <laughs> and I was like, just want to knock it down. Or when I did knock it down, I, there was a bruise there. <laughs> Think about Craig Biggio. He was one. I mean, when I he hit the ball down, he hit it so hard down the third base. And I was like, gosh. And it just was different. Sometimes there's just guys who was just different coming off their bat. Mm -hmm. Some would say that about you, no, Mark Garcia no, Parra. I don't like that. Two on, one out. Dodgers three runs in this inning. Four hits and a walk against Richard, who shut them out over eight innings at Dodger Stadium early on this year. Kershaw taps it back in play. Richard goes to second for one, and the third double play of the game turned by the Padres. But the Dodgers collect three hits from Turner. Bellinger, Puig, and Barnes, and the Dodgers have a 3 0 lead.
They've gotten Kershaw three runs. Done it 110 times previously, and he's only lost in eight of those. Dodgers up 3 nothing, bottom of the fourth, and now Kershaw, who has, again, not been his dominant self, has a chance to take a deep breath with this lead to work with and settle into this thing. Cody Bellinger, an RBI single to open the scoring for the Dodgers. Got a run on a throwing air, got a run on a Puig single. An inning where they really made Clayton Richard work and finally broke through against him. So it's Will Myers, three, four, and five in the Padres' order here in the fourth inning. Fly to center his first time. He's ready to go, so is Kershaw. Ball one. Now, Myers, we mentioned last year, finally staying healthy. Late in May, he was starting to feel some issues with his wrist and his forearm again. One and one. And was considering going on the disabled list again. It just kind of been what he had gotten used to doing. Then I had a conversation with James Shields, who was pitching for San Diego at that point, and it turned into a turning point in his career. Big curve puts him behind one and two. Shields told him flat out, quit being a baby. Said, Will, your job at this level is to show up and play every day. Kershaw makes quick work of him. One out in the fourth. And he followed that with a monster month of June. Wound up not going on the DL. Was National League Player of the Month. And looking back on the season once it was finished, said, you know what? Had I gone on the DL, not listened to James Shields in that situation, probably wouldn't have been an all-star. Wouldn't have been in the home run derby, which was here in this ballpark. Maybe wouldn't have signed that huge contract, a franchise record deal following the season. Now here was Solarte takes ball one. Well sometimes it just takes one person. One person to just kind of change your mindset. Fly ball to left. Easy play Gutierrez. Who keeps coming on the wind may be pushing that thing a little bit farther forward than he had expected Two out. Great Dodger Moments coin collection presented by 76 continues May 18th when the Marlins are in town on the first 40,000 in attendance. Get a coin commemorating Clayton Kershaw's no hitter against the Rockies. Go to Dodgers.com slash promotions to learn more. Hedges takes a strike. I guess that wind when the ball gets up that high is really gusting. That or Gutierrez just read it poorly off of the bat. Ball and a strike. That's an American flag that is like really high, higher than any part of the stadium. And that one shows a gusting wind. One and two. It's funny because as players, you always you're always asking. Usually, if you know somebody in the opposing team, or it's even sometimes like occasionally in the scouting report of which flag do I look at so I know which way the wind blowing. Edges tries to lay off a curve and does two and two. The stadium's going to have numerous flags around there. And they can say no, no, don't look at the one in the outfield, or don't maybe look at the one behind home plate, or look at the one in center field, or look at because sometimes they could be blowing different ways, and they'll and, and they know they say no, this is the one that you should look at. Edges cracks his bat on a roller to second. Taylor juggles and throws it away into the dugout. So Hedges will get second. 
And some shoddy defense there opening the door for San Diego. Chris Taylor is going to kick himself for this one. He does everything. He has it. It's just really on the exchange. For a second, I don't know if that, I was thinking that lip might have been an issue, but the lip of the grass was not an issue. He, get, he fields it. It was really when he was taking his glove to his hand is when the ball came out. And then after bobbling it, and then throwing it away. And they charge him with two errors on that one play, one on the juggle, one on the throw. Hunter Renfro with two gone. That's ball one. And we were talking uh, to Dave Roberts, someone the team was up in San Francisco a couple weeks ago about how hard it was to read the ball in the air there. And he said it was the hardest park that he ever played in at AT&T because of the issue with the flags. He said there were none that you could trust. Two and out. Renfro walked his first time. One of only four walks this season issued by Kershaw and is 43 and a third. A 2 0. Pulled foul, 2 and 1. Five Ks for him tonight. The strikeout to walk ratio on the year is now 49 and 4. With Hedges at second and two gone, Kershaw to Renfro with a 2 1 pitch. Ball three. Hunter Renfro came into this game with two walks on the season. He's walked twice against Kershaw. And that was interesting right there. I mean, that was just four straight balls by Clayton Kershaw. After looking good against Will Myers, getting Solarte. I you know that was an error with Hedges, but he was still looked like he was coming back and he. This was the sharpest inning he's had so far in this game. Jabari Blash representing the tying run suddenly and flying the first pitch to short right. The wind plane tricks with it. Puy comes on and catches it. I think everybody's finding out that that wind is something to deal with. Clayton Kershaw showing a ton of emotion. As he gets out of the inning unscathed, then we go to the fifth in a three nothing game.
brought to you by your Southern California Toyota dealers. Toyota time is going on now. Get incredible deals on a fuel efficient RAV4 hybrid. Trevor Hoffman on this date in 2005 became the third pitcher in big league history to get his 400th save. And those the nasty gold Hoffman. uniforms Got him on the outside against the St. Louis history. Cardinals. Join Lee Smith, John Franco on the 400 save club. Playing Richard misses with the first pitch to Chris Taylor getting this fifth inning started. Hoffman finishes career with 601 saves. Only Mariano Rivera with more 652 for the great Rivera. Hoffman was the guy that they brought in during the four plus one game. After the first two batters went deep then Hoffman came in two more home runs. Three and oh on Taylor. And therefore you came up and uh, ended that thing in the bottom of the next inning. It's fun reliving it today right we talked with backstage Dodgers about it some. Three and one me from the perspective of last weekend yeah, and then you taking us back to the four plus one. Yeah, last weekend was uh, was fun to watch wow. that was really it was great what a. Incredible comeback for the Dodgers. Three and two. And I was talking about they're asking me about why oh, you guys hit it off Trevor Hoffman and I said you know. We got to see him quite a bit. Because. When you have two teams that are equally matched. Lead off walk for Taylor and playing against each other 19 times and going over going to the end of the division. You had a lot of you know possibly one run games and so you're seeing the closer. So you almost had like confidence says OK I think we could get to him or, or know what he's throwing or how he's going to start you off. You can get whatever pattern it may be. So we were. Very fortunate to be able to. Get to him and get those couple home runs, and it's quite a night. Taylor's walk for the second time tonight, and Corey Seager comes up. As you were watching last Saturday's game, were you thinking, "Oh my gosh, it's happening again"? Were you thinking back to the four plus one game? I was definitely reminded, and I was just uh, as I was thinking about that. Last the game watching I was just sitting there with my daughter and how excited she we both were watching that game. Strike one. And just having my daughter just repeat. <laughs> after the third home run it was. It was awesome she just said absolute <laughs> madness just repeated what you said and it was just. The cutest thing. Seager fouls it off and it's 0 and 2. I guess if your daughter is repeating what I'm saying, I really have to be careful what I say then. Right? <laughs> Always, right? <laughs> yeah. No, it was it, it was great. I mean, it really was because she actually wanted to see the end of the game. She was like, she was, she was way past her bedtime, and I'm like, you got to go to bed. She's like, can I just stay up and watch it? I'm like, okay, come on, climb into bed, let's watch it. Inside ball one. Now you can never. Say that she you can never say this game's over you have to go to bed because she's going to say hey, well, well dad remember last time. Uh -huh. And I really can't argue with her I'm like OK you're right yeah. they'd be teaching a bad lesson you're right. Richard DeSeeger with a one two and Corey takes it low two balls two strikes. One for two today singled on the first pitch that he saw and then struck out it's one of the four K's Richards accumulated all three runs that he's allowed came in the fourth. There's another K. Any idea what Corey's argument is. He didn't like. Some of the pitches before on him. Oh, I know what he's I think he was complaining about. Him not stopping something. Uh, I don't know. Because it looked like he did stop, so that wasn't it. One gone for Turner. 
Ball one. Justin one for two. Started the rally last inning with a base hit and came in to score the Dodgers' first run. Clayton Richard, a 33 year old out of Lafayette, Indiana. He's battled shorter, shoulder problems throughout his career. First had a surgery in 2011. That was a few years after he debuted. And actually, in a game at Dodger Stadium, felt the shoulder go again. 2 0. That was in 2013. Threw two pitches and then walked off the mound. Knew something bad had happened. Had surgery on his AC joint days after. And then soon after that, surgery to relieve thoracic outlet syndrome, which involves removing a rib. Removing a rib. Now you have others. <laughs> I guess, yeah. <laughs> Missed all of 2014. Came back with the Cubs in 2015. His 2 0. Misses away. Three balls, no strikes. His first stop, though, in his comeback was as an Arizona minor leaguer. Pitching a double A mobile and his manager at that point was now his manager of the Padres Andy Green. And once Richard was signed by the Padres he thought back to that. It's a four pitch walk to Turner. And he said I'm surprised Andy Green wanted me on the team. I was so bad when he saw me in mobile in one of my first games back. But Green said that Richard's attitude and his leadership stuck with him. He wanted that around this young roster. I think that's a good lesson to kids back home. It's not always about the result, but it's the way the way you handle it often is leaving more of an impression. Two on with one on, it's Gutierrez. In the dirt, great stop by Austin Hedges. Just got a text from one of our bosses, Eric Braverman, back in Los Angeles. He has a great point. Has there ever been a game where both batteries are Clayton and Austin? Huh. Two and I bet and you this is a first. Right, because we set off at the top. There's only been one other Clayton, Clayton versus Clayton, Clayton matchup. These two guys. So there's never ever been probably Clayton and Austin. You are There's witnessing history. And we, and we witnessed it yesterday too with that four hour <laughs> 11 minute game. I like this history more. Okay. A 2 0 and Gutierrez takes ball three. He's not been the same Clayton Richard the Dodgers saw at game two of the season when he fired those eight shutout innings. Richard in his first six starts walked 11. He's walked five today and is behind Gutierrez three and zero. Oh. This will be the ninetieth pitch coming. We'll see if he has the green light to swing three zero. Oh. Strike one. <laughs> if there was a pitch you wanted to let go, that was it. Mm -hmm. And I know he's had five walks, but that's even more so where you're thinking, okay, he, this is the one. He doesn't want to walk me. It's going to come right down the middle. Three and two now. <laughs> and the old Mariner, Franklin Gutierrez. It's Craig Stammen getting loose. Say old Mariner, but he's really an old Dodger, too. Dodgers are the team that signed Gutierrez. 
out of Venezuela back in 2000. On this payoff, instead of look back to second. Gutierrez is formerly one of the top prospects in the Dodgers system. Traded to Cleveland before opening day 2004. That was for Milton Bradley. And made his big league debut the next year with Cleveland. Taylor at second. Turner at first. Both of them walking against Richard here in the fifth. Now the payoff. Ball four. He's walked the bases loaded. And Cody Bellinger comes to the plate. We look back at the Morongo Casino Resort and Spa Slow Mo Cam. Started the scoring in that three run fourth with a base hit to left center. And stole his first big league bat. Good timing all around. Big hit for Cody Bellinger. Showing off the wheels. Now they're actually not playing them as much to pull as they did last time. They're actually playing them more straight up. With well, the base is loaded, Bellinger takes ball one. There may not be a more exciting at bat in the National League right now than Cody Bellinger with the base is loaded. Popped up. Short left center. Sardinas has it spotted and pulls it in for out number two. Calling an infield fly on that one. Yet another chance, though, for the Dodgers to add on. Bases loaded and two gone, and it's Kike Hernandez. Kike rips a base hit down the left field line. It gets all the way to the corner. Taylor and Turner both score. Gutierrez stops at third on a two-run double from Kike Hernandez. And they've busted it open against Richard here in the fifth. That's 5-0. Kike does a good job getting the barrel down and in on this ball, driving that. Clayton Richard having trouble hitting his spots with his command this inning, but it looked like he was going to possibly get out of it after walking the bases loaded. Kike with a big, big two out RBI double. So now it's Puig, second and third with two gone. Yasiel takes strike one. As a reflection of the way they've made Richard work, 96 pitches through four and two thirds. Scoring these five runs on seven hits and five walks. And a one. Outside, ball one. Six walks, beg your pardon. Seven hits, six walks. Richard had walked 11 in his first six starts. Puig smacks it to second. Spear and a bounce by Salarte, and that finishes the inning. But a two out double from Kike Hernandez brings home two more halfway home in a 5 nothing game.
fifth as the Dodgers have a five to zero lead and out there in left field is Andrew Tolles. But after this double Gutierrez is at first base and you're going to see Chris Woodward. He wants to send him but Gutierrez wasn't necessarily running really hard. Let's not forget he was coming off been on the hand coming off the DL with a hamstring issue. And Chris Woodward was wanting to send him and at the end of that inning as he was actually crossing home plate after the hard hit by Yasiel Puig Dave Roberts comes out and talks to him a little bit and next thing you know so he's kind of stretching it out there they send out Andrew Tolles left field. Luis Sardinas looks at a strike and of course Gutierrez just spent a few weeks on the DL with a hamstring injury. Quickly 0 2. Hate to see it. You know, I was telling, we talked about it earlier, but yesterday he had to score from first on that double by Andrew Tolles in the right center gap. And in yesterday's game, I was talking about how I was holding my breath because hamstrings, yeah, you may have come off, you were on the deal for a hamstring, but it's moments like that where you're. He was also on the bench. He didn't start the game. You pinch hit. You're on base, and now you have really have to turn it on and score. Tardinas, a strikeout victim of Kershaw's to begin the fifth. And those are the times where you might aggravate it again. And so I was worried, and he looks fine. I'm not saying that's where he aggravated it, but it was moments like that. And here was another moment where he's on first base, and this time Kika hit down the line where he can possibly score from first base, and you saw. Chris Woodward he wanted him to score. But he ends up holding him up at third base because he wasn't quite there yet and. It looks like the trainers are looking at him. You know why. Alan Cordoba the batter now for San Diego pinch hitting for Clayton Richard whose night officially comes to a close. Kershaw brings Cordoba an 0 1 and it's yanked foul. 0 and 2. Cordoba one of the three rule five selections of the Padres on the roster this year. Cordoba had never played above rookie ball prior to this season. And so those numbers put in that context pretty darn impressive. Facing Kershaw for the first time. And retired in short order. Back to back K's open the fifth Kershaw has seven tonight. So it's another night where Kershaw I'm sure afterwards will talk about battling without his very best stuff. He's shown a lot of frustration. More frustration I think than we've seen at any point this year. At four and two thirds shut out innings and strike one on Manny Margot. One and one. Most frustrated after the two walks to Hunter Renfro. It's a complete anomaly. Renfro two walks on the season coming in and two against Kershaw tonight. Who had walked four. Over his first six starts. A one one. That's a strike one and two. He actually walked three over his first six starts. Trying to strike out the side in the fifth. Bouncing ball past the mound is second. Chris Taylor across his body, not in time. Margot with an infield single. As an infielder, you're so frustrated. Already have a one play where you make two errors. And you did that in the last inning where possibly get a one two three inning and then now this play here where you know you come up with the play and it looks like he beats it. I don't think they're going to challenge or nor should they on that one. First base umpire taught to look at the bag to watch for the foot to hit and listen for the pop of the glove.
So the inning kept alive for Corey Spangenberg. Who takes strike one. Spangenberg started his college career at a really unlikely spot to be a first round pick. He was at VMI. Virginia Military Institute. Huge curve puts him behind 0 and 2. Seeing that curve, not a good feeling as a hitter where you're going, okay, that's a ball out of his hand. That's way up. Oh, it slipped. Oh, no, here, that's a strike. Okay. <laughs> Things are going to finish in my eyes, right? What does he follow it with? Another curve falls out of the sky. Taylor in short right gets him. Five shutout innings for Clayton Kershaw. We move to the six. Six Dodger calendar. One more with the Padres before a quick homestand Monday through Wednesday at Dodger Stadium against the Pittsburgh Pirates. And the Dodgers on a seven game trip through Colorado and San Francisco. Will we play tomorrow? There have been two rainouts since Petco Park opened in 2004, one of them in 2006, one of them in July of 2015. And there is our forecast. Rain begins tonight, lasts throughout the day Sunday. That's what the hour, hour by hour tells me on weather.com. That's what the graphic tells me. Must be true. You think we're going to play? Ah, there's always a window. Greg Stammen to Austin Barnes, who has collected hits in both of his ABs. Strike one. Maybe that's because I spent so much time on the East Coast. That's what they always told us. Ah, there's always a window. Dahman started his 12th outing for the Padres this year, tailing a fastball into Barnes, 0 and 2. Double and a single. Ball one. So the day finished for Clayton Richard, who walked six. And those six walks match a career high set all the way back in 2009. Dodgers getting five runs on seven hits six walks. Two and two on Barnes.
It's dominant his first year in San Diego, former Washington National. 6'4", 230 pounder. Lines and deals, and Barnes takes strike three. Ohio native, played his college ball at Dayton. Debuted in 2009, now 33 years old. And we'll face Kershaw. Kershaw smacks it to short. Sardinas two up, two down. Come to the game May 10th. That's a Wednesday night. Dodgers Stadium. Dodgers hosting the Pirates. And the first 40,000 fans in attendance get a Kenley Jansen bobblehead, courtesy of Farmer John. For tickets, go to Dodgers.com slash promotions. We're only a month into the season, and we're already running out of room at our house to put all these bobbleheads and coins and microphone statues. Been a great year for promotion so far, and it's going to keep on rolling with Kenley Jansen, a bobblehead, next Wednesday. Going to need a bigger house. That's what Oral said, too. Maybe you guys can get together and help me out with a down payment. <laughs> Strike one on Taylor. One and one. Chris has fit nicely in that leadoff spot tonight. First time this year. He's walked twice. At his first career four walk game earlier this week. One and two. Newly married Craig Stallman. Married this January. Here's his one two. Taylor takes it low. Two balls two strikes. He and his new wife Audrey they honeymooned in Hawaii. And she hit a hole in one during their honeymoon while they were out golfing. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean. I mean, does she use that? I mean, well, obviously she didn't need a sign because she was, it was your honeymoon. She so already, you know, but is that maybe signs for to come? Right. I mean, they or, say that. See, here's the thing, though. Rain on your wedding day is supposed to be good, good luck. luck. What's a hole in one? Hole in one on your honeymoon. You know what they say. <laughs> you had a hole in one on your honeymoon in Hawaii. You know how the saying goes. Two two. Taylor grounds it softly to short and Sardinas finishes off a one two three inning for Craig Stallman. Bottom of the six coming up all Dodgers so far.
look at our Arco top tier plays of the game brought to you by Arco. Clayton Kershaw, seven strikeouts over five shutout innings. Padres have walked twice against him. They've collected three hits, but no damage done. Got at least one base runner in every inning except the third. Kershaw's been able to dance around any traffic and hold him off of the board through five. 87 and 0 in his career when he has this many runs of support. One of the more astounding active numbers in the game right now. Tough part of the Padres order here. Myers, Solarte, Hedges. Curve drops out of the sky for a ball. Myers 0 for 2 in this one, and now 1 for 20 against Kershaw with 9 Ks. One and one. Seen some typical intensity from Clayton today. Some frustration is boiled over. Part of what makes watching him such a blast. One and two. We came in talking about the slider and his issues with that so far this year. What have you thought of what you've seen from it tonight? It's still not. He'll probably say, listen, it wasn't as sharp or I didn't have the command I would like with it. Chopped his second. Chris Taylor positioned well for the first out. And, today, and I think there's been some inconsistencies with it. I think we've seen where that lack of sharpness has come to play. And then we've seen where there it is. Like, all right, he found it. That's what he's looking for. But it hasn't been a pitch for him where he just are, is going to on a regular basis and he's he's throwing it with conviction knowing that it's going to do what he likes. Mentioned earlier last year he averaged 16 swings and misses per outing. Here's Salarte. Pops the first one back. That'll reach the seats for strike one. So average 16 swings and misses per outing last year. Averaging 11 this year. He's at 12 tonight. We still got quite a few bullets left. And you'd imagine it'll get closer to the average from last year in this one. Ball on a strike on Salarte. There's a changeup. It's the other thing he's been working on this year and adding to his repertoire is that changeup, which as a hitter you're going great. Now I have to look for that one as well. Right. Shattered bat roller to short. He just sawed Salarte off. Two gone. Barrel of that bat went all the way to the backstop. It's a handle sitting along the base path. Everything else is behind home. Austin Hedges, 1 0. A change up you were mentioning. He says he messes with that more than any other pitch right now, but it just doesn't come natural to him. 2 0. He said his ball has a natural cut to it, so making it go the other way for him is a difficult thing that he's had to try and manipulate. Edges to the hole it's short Seeger to his feet long throws dug out. Oh snapshot of the present and the future on both ends of that play. Corey Seeger takes it away in the hole and Cody Bellinger picks it off a bounce.
slow mo, Cameron. I'm gonna let you handle this one, Mr. Shortstop. Uh, this was just showing off the tremendous range and a strong arm by Corey Seager. I mean, that was just an unbelievable play. First of all, to get to the ball and then to throw it across and an unbelievable pick over there and your ace appreciating it all around. And then you have to lead off the inning. Isn't that always the case? <laughs> Ball one. He even got a smile out of Clayton Kershaw on that play. Has to be some advanced stat, but that helps. <laughs> His war just skyrocketed. <laughs> Fly ball to left center. I'm sure. Javari Blash. I'm sure there is a stat. How many times have you made Clayton Kershaw smile on a play? Yeah. Right? Um, smiles above replacement. <laughs> You're on fire today. Seager the first out of the seventh. And Justin Turner comes up with the Dodgers up 5 0. Turner now hits in 19 of his last 21 with a leadoff single in the fourth. Also walked in the fifth and scored after both times that he reached. Strike one. Dodgers won the opener 8 2 last night in a tidy four hours and 11 minutes. They used six pitchers in that game to record a four hitter combined. It's 0 2. This is a note from the great Eric Steven at True Blue LA. It was only the eighth time in the last century plus that the Dodgers had done that. Six pitchers, four hits or fewer. And three of those eight times have happened over the last year plus. Turner jams it foul. We'll do it again. That's Dave Roberts' propensity to play the matchups. And it's where we stand in baseball 2017. Yeah, you don't see the starters going quite as deep into games anymore. And you have a lot of specialists and in bullpens. One and two. And a lot of times they're looking at, you know, obviously they're looking at numbers. We know how much numbers and statistics is now in this game. And they look at that and once they see even a starting pitcher and they're going third time to the third time through the lineup and they see how the statistics kind of favor more the hitters compared to going to that bullpen. Generous outside corner gets Turner for the second out. Turner has a word with home plate umpire Toby Basner. Tolls coming up for the first time tonight. On for Franklin Gutierrez, who appeared to come up limp running the bases earlier tonight. So the Tolls replaced him defensively last inning. Drive to right center. Renfro is there to make a lunging catch and finish the Dodgers in the seventh. They go down in order. Second consecutive one, two, three inning for Stalin.
brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop ChooseNissan.com. And by Carl's Jr., the baby back rib burger, only at Carl's Jr. A tarp sighting. Not that there's rain imminent, but I just referenced that because the tarp's normally hidden. Check this out. This is uh, it's from February of this year. As Hunter Renfro takes a ball. This place completely flooded. And rain is coming tonight. Renfro drags a bouncer off of Turner and into left. He's reached all three times against Kershaw. Anywhere from 50 or 60 to 100 percent rain on the hour each hour from tonight until late tomorrow night. So there is a question whether or not tomorrow's game will be played. Here's a shot from tomorrow. Just kidding. I know you think you think that you think it's happening tomorrow. We'll see. Clouds starting to roll in. It has been pleasantly surprising how nice it's been tonight though. Ball one on Jabari Blash. Is there's rain in the forecast some tonight like Alana told us still is but we haven't seen any. I mean there's some dark gray clouds but there's no rain yet. It's okay it can hold off. It's been chilly though. It sure has. Here's a 1 0. It's a strike. I have softened so fast. It happens. It happens to the best of them. You live out there in <laughs> Southern California and you get soft really quick. I am proudly soft. Curve's been working for him tonight. One and two. Swung in the dirt, two balls, two strikes. This is, by the way, the anniversary today of the very first time a tarp was used to cover the infield. 1906, May 6, 1906, in Pittsburgh at Exposition Park. On 2-2, two, two. Blash looks at strike three. They used an old circus tent, pulled that across the infield in Pittsburgh after their game on this date in anticipation of rain coming the next day against the Cubs and covered it up, played the next day. So you're, you were saying anniversary of actual the tarp. I thought you were just talking about an anniversary of the tarp here in San Diego back in 1906. No. It never ran, but the tarp. Yes. Wow. First time they covered a baseball field. May 6, 1906, with a circus tent. Runner at first in one garn, and it's Luis Sardinas. Pulling the bouncer to third. Turner goes to second. There's one. There's two. There's seven. Shutout innings from Clayton Kershaw.
Stage Dodgers go behind the scenes with Vin Scully returning to Dodgers Stadium on Vin Scully Day for the Ring of Honor ceremony and take a look back at Vin's visit to the White House to receive the Presidential Medal of Freedom earlier this year. Don't miss Backstage Dodgers presented by Hankook Tires Thursday right after the post game on Sportsnet LA. Seven shutout innings for Clayton Kershaw and as you see on these last couple of shots the light rain has begun to fall. And a five nothing game in the eighth. Cody Bellinger to start the eighth for the Dodgers. Craig Stallman misses inside with the first one. Cody today a walk. And an RBI single came into score after that base hit. Overshift on him. And he pops one in foul territory. See what the wind does with it. Makes it a souvenir in about the 10th row, one and one. So overshift again. But if he keeps doing what he did the last time they overshifted him, he'll see less of those. He's singled against it where the shortstop normally stands. You notice Sardinas playing pretty tight over there at third and pretty tight to the line because Bellinger's already shown he will bunt against it. One and two. Now with two strikes they remove the third baseman put him in short right a one two Bellinger jams it foul in that pitch before the Bellinger when he swung through it and you can see he was frustrated with himself because that ball was down the middle and he swung and missed it. Be curious to ask him okay what are you thinking after that like what are you telling yourself about why you missed it and the adjustments you're making and, and I guarantee you that's what the hit a hitting coach and Turner Ward will do to also understand him to understand his thoughts and also to see how he's evolving as a hitter to, to see OK he recognized this is what I felt on that swing. Laid it off the eighth. Taking ball two. Turner Ward has talked about how advanced Cody's mindset is his ability to make small adjustments quickly his self awareness with his own swing. Well beyond his years. A 2 2. High drive, right center field. Back on it goes Renfro with room this time in front of the track for the first out. And it's funny, as you said, that awareness and as Turner Ward starts working with it and understanding him as well, it's times where it's the misses at times where you can learn so much. And you go back and you talk about it with their hitters and even now you something you go even go back on the video sitting with him and said OK. What was your thought process. What did you feel happened here. There's a lot of times too as a hitter. You feel something as you swing and you go back in the video and see if you did exactly what you felt. Hmm. How much bigger. Is video now for hitters than it was at the beginning hmm. of your career. Oh it, it's. It's huge now even when you go into a clubhouse now now there's about eight computers eight laptops out and you see them all being used. Mm -hmm. So somebody's sitting at them and when I was coming up it was VH still VHS tapes that we had stacks of tapes. Here's the one one to Kike Hernandez one and two. And so is it just the lack of convenience that Meta wasn't as big of a deal. Um. That might I don't know if that's it but I think now all this advanced sabermetrics as well has probably incorporated it. So you're getting all of these numbers and you want to match it up with video as well. DK down swinging Stammen perfect through two and two thirds. And I also think too they've added just so many more cameras at stadiums and camera angles too. You would have been an obsessive video guy in this day and age wouldn't you. No. Oh, no. No. I even even when we did have it. When I was 
going well or I, I really didn't watch much like I said a lot of times I would just go back to see just that one swing or that to see if I did what I felt in the middle of that at bat. Puig takes a strike like if, for example if I felt like my I, I feel like I pulled my shoulder out too quickly there. Go back. Yep I did. OK that's so just enough. look that's for it. confirmation that just, or yep. affirmation. Right. A little bit low one and one later in my career when I was starting. And things weren't <laughs> as you get older I was getting what was getting frustrated was when you when you couldn't feel or you felt like you were doing something or you thought you were doing something and you went back and you looked at video and it wasn't happening. You're like wait a minute I felt like I was staying in or I felt like I didn't pull my shoulder and then I did or I felt like I did this and you look at it and you're like no nope, you didn't do that either so that's where the frustration can come in. And, and it can happen at any time I mean. Mm -hmm. Now CL one for three today with an RBI single he has three hits this weekend. And waits on a one two from Stammen. Fouled off and you talk about accessibility I mean now. Not only in the clubhouse are there numerous laptops there but there's even computers literally right inside the dugout like right when you probably go down and tunnel there's video everybody has that every team so it's not like oh just one team's doing. everybody has it right there so they can literally go look if they don't even want to look if it's a ball or strike they can do it instantly. That's three perfect innings for Craig Stommen. Well, the Dodgers built the five nothing lead against the starter Clayton Richard and that's where it stands middle eight. Finish up Access Sports Now brought to you by your Southern California Nissan dealers. The guys waiting in the studio. Alana will have post game coverage from the clubhouse. Now, what is hopefully a Dodger win? After they took the opener 8 2 last night, they lead 5 0 here to the bottom of the eighth, and Kershaw's back out there to pitch the eighth inning. Uh, on a night where he has struck out eight, he's walked two and allowed. No runs on four hits so 96 pitches and Dave Roberts happy to send him back out here for an eighth. With the light rain falling Ryan Schimpf pinch hitting to lead off the inning and taking ball one. Schimpf homered against Kershaw. On opening day. Drives this ball to right center field. Flying towards the wall, and it is gone. Schimpf gets Kershaw for the second time. And 
Kershaw visibly upset with Toby Basker, the home plate umpire. Thought he had gotten strike one. And then in the next pitch gets taken deep. Manny Margot in a 5 1 game fouls it off of Barnes. 0 and 1. Even by Clayton standards, he's been a little bit emotional today. It's one and one. So here was the first pitch of that AB where he wanted strike one. Didn't get it, didn't like it. He was asking him once again, was that in? He saw him. Two and one. And even though, you know, Clayton wanted that, even though he missed his spot, you know, you saw clearly they wanted it away. And Austin Barn had to reach all the way over. And I'll tell you, is I understand from a pitcher standpoint they want that, but as a hitter too, if I turn or like if I follow it all the way in and happen, and or I look back and I saw that the catcher reached to catch the ball, and then the umpire called it a strike, I'm looking at the umpire like, really, he had to reach for that, and you're calling that? Mm -hmm. A two-two. Margot digs it out to stay alive. Now. It shouldn't matter. I mean, you reach over whatever. If it's hitting, if it's in the strike zone, it should be called a strike. I get that, but I'm telling you, there are moments where you're looking at it, and as a hitter, and also as a as a pitcher, even if it's off a little bit of the plate, but he feels if he hits the glove, it should be called a strike. A full count now, and he's matched his season high with 104 pitches. No sign of anybody warming down in the Dodger bullpen. A payoff to Margot mm. and a rare three walk game for Clayton. Hey. That'll get the bullpen charged up. That's we were talking about that slider you know just that doesn't have the feel has been inconsistent with it and today it looked like that's what they were calling for there. That slider once again and he just spiked it into the ground. Pedro Baez starts to get ready to come in. Kershaw had walked three over 41 and a third to start the year, and he's walked three and seven plus tonight. That's Corey understanding. <laughs> Sorry, that's understanding your pitcher. Strike one. And what I mean by that is Honeycutt. Let me tell you, he's not taking. He knows Kershaw is not yelling at him. Right. He knows the emotion, and that he's also was visually, as you mentioned, frustrated at the umpire. Catches the corner and it's 0 2. It's Clayton's first three walk game in two years. June of 2015 in this ballpark. One and two. I mean, you got to remember last year he walked 11 all year. Two and two. He only had one multi walk game last season. Walk two at Pittsburgh in his final start before he went on the DL. Yeah, some of the numbers that he has, 
strikeout to walk ratios the amount of innings with the amount of walk, it's it's incredible just something he doesn't do he gets Spangenberg one gone and catches the throw back with his bare hand boy he's in rare form tonight with his body language and his intensity he said the last time was at Petco Park here where he walked two years ago he's had some success here at Petco Park <laughs> just, here, just give that back to me I'm fine I mean, he, 11 career starts has an ERA under two here now has nine K's as he comes home to Myers with a ball. And we obviously talk about it as a negative that he's walked three tonight but it only comes up as a negative because of how otherworldly he's been the last two years normally walking three is not a big deal for anybody. Just when you compare it. To his last year plus. Myers fouls it off one and one. Well, it's just incredible because we say, well, Clayton has walked three. And the next question is usually what? In two months? In three months? Yeah. I right. mean, that's, and it's a legit question. And that's what's just <laughs> crazy. You're not saying, oh, no, he walked three today. <laughs> In the entire month of May last year, Kershaw walked two. 65 strikeouts and two walks last May. One one to Myers. Dragged foul and it's one and two. It's one of the greatest months ever pitched. In fact, he was the fourth pitcher in the modern era to have a sub one ERA with a 65 strikeout line in a calendar month. Randy Johnson did it in June of 1997. Roger Clemens did it in August of 1998. Pedro Martinez, September of 99. We were part of that team. And then Kershaw last May. Wanted the outside Ooh. corner, didn't get it. Oh. Pinwheels oh. in frustration. Two and two. Wow, look at that pitch. Yes, that was definitely a strike. He catches the corner. Mm. And credit to Toby Bassner for leaving Kershaw in the game. Could have easily pulled the trigger. Fouled off, still two and two. That was a good pitch by Clayton Kershaw. That was a strike. That yeah. was strike three. So maybe that was his makeup call, not <laughs> giving him the hook. 115 pitches is most this year by 11. And a 2 2 to Myers. A curve misses. 3 and 2. Game within the game right now almost feels like Clayton Kershaw against Toby Basner. I'm going to find that corner and make you give it to me. The payoff fouled back. Most pitches in a regular season game for Kershaw since September of 2015. It's another 3 2 to Will Myers. And then he walked him. So the fourth walk of the night will likely finish his night. If Roberts calls into the bullpen, Pedro Baez will come in. Kershaw poured everything he had into these final few pitches.
I think we were all watching to see if he was going to say something to the home plate umpire. is brought to you by BMW. See a Southern California BMW Center today. BMW. See a Southern California BMW Center today for exceptional offers or visit SoCalBMW.com. So Clayton Kershaw leaves after seven and a third with two on both his responsibility. 118 pitches his most in two years. And Pedro Baez comes on San Diego trying to make things interesting here in the eighth they got a home run from Shim. And now with two Kershaw walks have first and second with one out. Playing despite all the emotion, all the frustration with Toby Bassner. Kept his cool walking off of the field. Didn't have anything to say for Bassner, who is still very young by umpire standards, 32 years old. Only been umpiring in the majors for five seasons now. And it's interesting because Austin Barnes, when he was out there, when they were taking him out, Clayton actually asked Austin, like, did he say anything and mm. not that I know what Austin answer but I wonder if it was something that may have calmed him down just a little bit as he was walking off. So Baez on to face Salarte the switch hitter flips around and will bat left handed for the first time. 0 for 3 against Kershaw. One and 0. Bassner started umpiring when he was 12 years old. There's Kenley Jansen getting loose just in case this gets any more interesting. It's from Bowling Green, Ohio, where Ole Hershiser played his college ball. Two on, one out, and a 1 0. A pop up. Playable for Turner. Infield fly rule in effect makes the grab anyways to God. I really wonder how long it takes Clayton Kershaw to kind of debrief once he's taken out of a game because. Uh -huh. It does, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't happen when he's doing his press conference because no. he's still not there yet. I mean, how long it it is when he probably when he gets home. Austin Hedges now two on and two out in the eighth inning. Yeah, it'll help you help you decompress to get home to his wife Ellen, his kids. Callie, his daughter, his new son, Charlie. I think they probably make sure daddy's decompressed. <laughs> 
But he does very similarly tonight what he did following the four runs on eight hits line earlier this year. By his home with it on one, Hedges fouls it back and it's 0 and 2. Kershaw gave up four runs on eight hits to the Rockies and followed that by going eight and a third. Gave up four runs on eight hits to the Giants earlier this week and follows it up by going seven and a third. And if Baez is able to get the out here, he'll give up just a solo homer. Margo at second. Myers at first, both Kershaw's responsibility. Baez and Barnes work to get on the same page. And an 0-2. Upstairs, ball one. Was there a uh, was there a motion there from Barnes to Margot, the runner at second? With his glove? Yeah. No, that was, say. I think it was, uh, no, that's where he was telling Baez he wanted that ball up. He okay. Letting him know he wanted it up. Two and two. Because if you're feeling like the man at second base might be relaying the signs or noticing something, then you go out there and you go talk to your your pitcher first uh -huh. and foremost. And even then, as you're going talking about, then you're even closer to say something rather than doing it at home plate. Right. For all of us to see. Yeah. yeah. Baez delivers 2 2 and Hedges takes ball three. Runners are good ahead start here. Padres with a base hit in the right spot could cut this to two. Margo and Myers both good speed. Clayton continues to pace in that dugout, wondering what the final line will say about tonight. Pedro Baez has the responsibility of having the number at one for Kershaw. Hunters go on a 3 2, and it's ball four to load them up. Padres bring the tying run to the plate here in the form of Hunter Renfro. And Dave Roberts not going to mess around. Kenley Jansen likely getting the call. Jock Peterson comes in in a double switch, replacing Kike Hernandez. And here comes Kenley to try and slam an early door in a 5 1 game in the eighth. Center replacing Kike Hernandez. 
Kenley Jansen for the fourth time this year called on to try and get four outs. Well we see him do it a lot last year. He's already done it this year. And also you know Dave Roberts is it's oftentimes a feeling when Clayton Kershaw's on the mound. It's one of those not saying must wins but it's feeling like we, we have to win those guys those games so. Not afraid to bring in Kenley for a possible four out save. Bring him on for Hunter Renfro as some of the best power you'll find. It's just been a matter of making contact for him also a lot of strikeouts. Tying run at the plate in the eighth inning. Jansen ready for the first one to Renfro. Strike one. And then he won't stop pacing until this inning's over. Inside this time, one ball and one strike. Dodgers with three in the fourth and two in the fifth. Padres getting their lone run on a leadoff pinch hit homer from Ryan Schimpf against Kershaw here in the eighth. San Diego then loading the bases on two walks against Kershaw, one against Baez. A 1 1. It's 1 and 2. Two and two. And that one was pretty close as well. Loaded full of Padres with two gone in the eighth inning. Kenley Jansen wants to talk with Austin Barnes. Barnes has only caught two of Jansen's 11 outings so far this year. The 2 2. Full count. All three runners will be off and moving with his 3 2 Jansen pitch. Margot at third. Myers at second. Hedges at first. They all walked. Shuts it down. And the Padres leave them loaded. Kershaw exhales, even smiles. And it's 5 1 to the ninth in San Diego.
play MLB action packed with all your favorite MLB teams players ballparks and more. Get RBI Baseball today for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and mobile devices. You can learn more at rbigame.com. Dodgers up 5-1. Clayton Kershaw has that line preserved by Kenley Jansen. And I'm sure this discussion here between him and Dave Roberts is, boy, you were close to getting tossed in this one, weren't you, buddy? Clayton able to keep his cool just enough to stay in there and finish off his outing longest outing he's made as far as number of pitches this year 117 now for the ninth Miguel Diaz on to face eight nine and one in the Dodger order that's Barnes then Peterson off of the double switch and Chris Taylor one and oh so if we do play tomorrow it'll be Brandon McCarthy for the Dodgers and Trevor Cahill for San Diego the first pitch scheduled for 140. 2 0. And it's back home to Dodger Stadium. Jamison Tyon, Alex Wood Monday, Ivan Nova against Julio Urias Tuesday, and then Chad Cool and Kenta Maeda Wednesday. Strike one on Barnes. Good take three and one Barnes already two hits tonight double and a single pops one off of the hands to right and caught by Jabari Blash. So Jock Peterson's first trip up there tonight with the left handed starting pitcher as Kike Hernandez is started and Peterson in and the double switch to bat here with one gone in the night. Strike one. This is, by the way, you just saw Kenley Jansen in the dugout. It is a save opportunity for him. That one cuts inside and hits Peterson, but Toby Bassner says it hits his bat first. <laughs> He's oh, gonna, now he. Pe Because he was they, thinking, yeah, he was going to go say, so we'll just go to the film. We'll go, we'll just go look at the tape. Because originally he said it didn't hit him, and it hit him right in the shin. Just thought it hit the bat. And Jock and thought it, the call from home plate umpire Toby Bassner was foul ball. Right. Hit me in the, you uh, know what? Yeah, he, he goes, he hit me in my. He got hit yesterday, too. Yeah, down low just like that. And Dave Roberts thought the reaction was the same, which was foul ball, and he was ready to defend Jock. He's happy to find out it was actually dead ball. It was called by a Bassner. Well, I'm thinking probably can't wait to hit the showers. Some umpires have. Just stop yelling at me. Yeah. There are good nights and bad nights for them, just like the rest of us. So started to talk about Kenley. This is a save situation because he came in with a tying run at home plate last inning. Here's a 1-0 to Chris Taylor. That's up, ball two. for two but a pair of walks in his first game hitting leadoff as a Dodger. Oh. 
two and one. What do you think? You like the look of the lineup with Taylor at the top yeah. of it? And you mentioned those two walks, but both and both of those walks came when he was leading off the inning. Yeah, you're and right. That, and that's what's great. And that's exactly what you want from your leadoff hitter to find a way to get on base. So I really don't mind it. I think uh, we've seen holes in the leadoff spot, especially uh, against righties. You know, Dave Roberts likes him there. I don't mind that either. So that might be a position right now where facing lefties, it might be Chris Taylor and then Tolls flip flopping those two, depending on the matchup. We say that, but the lineup we know changes oh, yeah. <laughs> on a regular basis, but. Dodgers have had as many different lineups as anybody in baseball this year. Part of that injury induced. Part of that the platoons that they play and. The fact that Dave Roberts designs these lineups largely around matchups for the starting pitcher. Runner at first with one gone in the ninth and Miguel Diaz home with a 2 2 to Chris Taylor. Full count. Thing was cruising along until bottom of the eighth inning. So Clayton Kershaw was jumping on the mound. Slowed down from right <laughs> about then. <laughs> Jock runs. Taylor takes ball four. His third walk of the game. Up comes Seeger. Singled on the first pitch that he saw today. Since then, a couple of strikeouts and a fly out. Feels like Corey's due to go on one of his hot streaks. Three for his last 20 right now. Trying to add on here in the ninth. Strike one. Here in the ballpark that he made his major league debut in September of 2015. Fouls it off and it's 0 and 2. Went 2 for 4, knocked in 2. And that big league debut September 3rd. The two run double came on a 3 0 pitch. He's the best hitter on the team after his call up. 337 in that month of September. And then it's a three hitter in the first game of the postseason. Still 0 2. The youngest position player in Dodger history to start a postseason game. Did it as a 21 year old. Native of Kannapolis, North Carolina. Grew up on a farm about 30 miles north of Charlotte. Almost gets hit. One and two. Grew up in a family with two other pro ball players. Of course, Kyle Seeger, the Seattle Mariners, an all star himself, Justin Seeger, and the Mariners' farm system. Corey says that's where his even keel nature comes from. His early years at home with his two older brothers constantly picking on him, giving him a hard time, trying to get under his skin. And Corey said no matter what they said or did, never wanted to let them know that he was getting bothered, that they were getting to him. So he learned early to keep a straight face.
on a 2 2 from Diaz. He pulls a fly ball to right, hooked that one off the end of the barrel, and Blash makes the catch. Two on, two out in the ninth inning, and here's Turner. Justin scored after both times that he reached. Started the three run rally in the fourth, scored the final run of the fifth when they got two. And three outs away from getting their seventh win out of their last nine. One and all. San Diego meanwhile in danger of dropping a fourth consecutive game after a mini three game winning streak that they pulled off early on in this homestand. They would fall to 12 and 20. If the Dodgers can get the final three outs in this one. Way outside off of Hedges glove and the runners will advance to second and third. Really weird to see that ball go off Hedges glove after all the great stops we've seen him have right. behind the plate today. I mean he's just been all over knocking balls down in the dirt especially when there have been men on third base. He's been keeping them in front and then that one going off his glove. By the way did you see what the Giants did this time. No, I've been focused on the Dodgers. Well anytime you focus on oh, the Dodgers okay. there's a little focus right. on the Giants excuse <laughs> me though. Here's a 2 0. And a strike 2 and 1 they lost 13 3 yesterday at Cincinnati. They lost 14 2 today to Cincinnati. And have the worst run differential in the majors. Here comes Peterson and it's 6 1. Life is tough on Austin Edges right now, trying to gather these sliders from Miguel Diaz. And we were just talking about how well he's been able to block the ball. That one was so hard to get in front of. And Miguel Diaz. Averages over 95 miles an hour. He's got a hard slider. That one was in the other batter's box. Now oh, 3 1. It's ball four. Hit batsman two walks in the inning issued by Diaz they're at the corners with two away and Andrew Tolls comes up. So another opportunity for him to extend an eight game hitting streak. He came on for Franklin Gutierrez in the middle innings line to right his one time up. So often you see hitting streaks die when guys come off of the bench and just have a pinch hit appearance. He gets two. Strike one. Justin Turner kept his alive this season. He came off the bench one time and came up with a big hit and kept it alive. That last at bat from Tolls, I mean, he lined that ball. He hit that one well. Turner's game tying homer in the three home run yeah. ninth. That was a pinch hit to extend the hitting streak. One and one. This can be a real comfy at bat right now with the way Diaz is missing all over and the stuff that he's missing with. Two and 
two and one. Inside, three balls and a strike on Tolls. The pace and the feel of this game kind of feels like yesterday, like the first four or five innings of yesterday's game, doesn't it? Right? You hear this last inning, the ninth inning, all of a sudden. What is this last inning? And what has it done with the first seven innings of this game? That's such a snappy pace to it. Three and two. And Taylor at third and Turner at first to pay off the tolls. In the dirt ball four. Another walk and they're loaded up. That's nine Dodger walks in this game now to go along with the hit batsman. So they have one run this inning. Don't have a hit yet. Back in the fifth they got two runs. Only on one hit in that inning. Capitalizing, they had three walks in that inning alone. 15 walks in the two games. Started to rain a little bit again. Cody Bellinger with the bases loaded for the second time tonight. First time he blooped out to short. See what he can do here. Goes after the first one, hammers it foul. 0 and 1. His second home run last night came against Diaz. Took him out to center. That was a three run shot. This with the bases loaded. Pops another foul. Yes, it's relatively cool tonight. Mid 50s right now, and that rain making it a bit cooler. Bellinger turns on one way back to right field. The kid goes deep again. First career grand slam for Cody Bellinger. Or should we call him Babe? All I can do is just smile. I mean, <laughs> look at this pitch. Look how high it is. 95 miles an hour and able to get the barrel to that ball. I told you I was impressed. He had a home run off Diaz yesterday, and I was impressed at the one he hit the center field. That was impressive. Kenley Jansen grounds out to short. My goodness, we are watching something special with a 21 year old from Arizona. Cody Bellinger's third home run of the weekend is a grand slam to put an exclamation on this one.
Lexus player of the game Clayton Kershaw battled tonight really battled tonight that nine strikeouts total despite those four walks the most in a game in two years and is in position to win again. I just laugh at that we always go he battled which he did and I mean we, we and also the expectation we have a Clayton Kershaw. But going still seven in the third inning as you battle and have nine strikeouts. Yeah. And giving up just one earned run and he battled. I mean. And how many pitchers would love that line. Sure. Kelly Jansen in a rare spot pitching with a nine run lead. <laughs> Thanks to Cody Bellinger. And Jansen will still barring an absolute meltdown get a save here. Because when he came on, the tying run was at the plate in the eighth inning. Jabari Blash takes a strike. Kenley even got to hit, kind of flew under the radar because of uh, Cody Bellinger's grand slam. Ball on a strike. That was Jansen's fourth career at bat. His first career at bat, he got a hit. It's back in 2010. Former catcher. Now one for four in his career. Two and one. Three and one. And this can sometimes be hard on a closer to come in at a spot where there is zero adrenaline compared to what you're used to. I know he got an at bat, but he also sat there for a long time that end. Too. Blast drills one down the right field line. It peels foul, and it's three and two. As for a closer, you're usually warming up, and you're waiting for the call. You're nice and loose, and you're running in to close out the game. And even when you get those possible four-out saves that we've seen Kenley get in the past, usually isn't that long of an inning where they're scoring five or six runs. Base hit into center. And what made that inning long as well wasn't the fact, wasn't not only the fact that they scored five runs, but you had all those base on balls. Yeah. Luis Sardinas now with a runner at first and nobody out. All right, so the people that are in Los Angeles. Wondering if they should make the drive down tomorrow. Would you encourage them to do so with the weather? You've been the weatherman. I'm just giving you, you know. the facts about what my app's telling me. I want you to use your experience <laughs> in this sport. Uh, I can't predict the weather. So you wouldn't tell them not to come down. But don't get mad at him if it gets rained out, folks. <laughs> Put him on You're the just spot setting there. me up, aren't you? I did. Now that it's two on Sardinas. Trust your app. Starting at 5 a.m., there's anywhere between a 65. And 90 percent chance of rain until late tomorrow night. Just giving you the facts. You can make the decision based on that. One forty the scheduled start time. Ball one. So the Dodgers outscoring the Padres in this series 18-3. And on the season, outscoring them 41 13.
Colorado routed Arizona tonight. That means the Dodgers are trying to keep pace at the top of the West, but would move within a half game of the Diamondbacks for second. So Colorado would have a game and a half lead on the D-backs now, and it remained two on the Dodgers. Gets by Barnes up the second goes Jabari Blash two and two of the plate. Giants are now 11 and 20 from what you've seen. Is this just not their year or do you still think there's a turnaround there. Early on from what I've seen I mean they've been dealing with some injuries. Um, they're just not playing. Good baseball they play I think the best baseball they've been playing this year has been against the Dodgers. Yeah for their 11 mm -hmm. wins. Yeah. Got him swinging for the first out of the night. <laughs> Ryan Schimpf. Counted for the lone Padres run in this one with his team leading eighth homer against Kershaw. Second home run against Clayton. Schimpf last year made his big league debut after seven and a half years in the minors. Takes ball one. First hit as a big leaguer was a double into the corner, and he said that his first thought running out of the box was simply, Don't trip. One and one. That was my thought coming out of the dugout my first time. Was it really? Yeah, don't trip coming up yeah. at the steps out of the dugout. So did you clear that top step by uh, an incredible that's, amount? That's why I started stepping one at a time when I went up the steps. <laughs> I'm like, why do you do it one at a time? Don't want to trip. Did you always do it that way? Mm -mm. No. Two and one. Did you ever trip? No. Not that I remember. That's some kind of track record. <laughs> Coming up, maybe coming going down, but maybe not coming up. Probably hit your head a time or no. two anywhere. Uh, um, about a Detroit, the old Detroit. Old yes. So they used to have a little padding there when you were coming down in the dugout because I wasn't the only one that would be hitting their head. At least it was padded. Chuck swing foul and it's two and two. So Cody Bellinger a grand slam in the top of this inning to extend the lead to 10 1. Through his first 11 games in the majors five home runs. 14 RBIs. To put that into some Dodger perspective Yasiel Puig in his first 11 games when he set the world on fire June of 2013 four homers 10 RBIs strike over the outside corner two gone so Bellinger one more homer than Puig had at this point four more RBIs. I think he probably did. So the Padres down to their final out. It's Manny Margot, who has reached three times tonight with a pair of singles and a walk. Dodgers tomorrow will go for the sweep of the Padres. Just as they swept the Phillies last weekend. Strike one. 
Delval won five of six against San Diego. Seven of nine overall. three since Cody Bellinger's call up a little bit low this time one and one again tomorrow it's McCarthy for the Dodgers who is unbeaten this year with an ERA around three and Trevor Cahill has been one of the best starters for San Diego right hander is two and two with a 360. One and two on Margot. Three in the fourth, two in the fifth, and five in the ninth tonight. And as it was as the clock struck midnight last night, mostly Dodger fans remaining at Petco. The one two. Foul down the right field line. Abnormal tonight for Kenley getting the out to finish the eighth with the bases loaded and the tying run at the play but then a nine run lead after sitting there in the dugout for an extended period of time and the five run top of the inning. That extends it a base hit to right. They'll hold Blash at third on a single from Margot. And Kelly Jansen having thrown 28 pitches Dave Roberts comes out. And. As just a quick word for Kenley, Chris Hatcher getting loose. What do you think that message was? Get him out. <laughs> Good talk. See you there out you there. Go. Spangenberg, who's one for four, now climbs in against Kenley. earlier tonight Spangenberg started his college career at Virginia Military Institute he was the freshman player of the year in the conference but the military commitments were taking him away from baseball a ton decided to transfer the junior college route was there for one year for the Padres drafted him 10th overall runner takes off on a ball fouled off one and one that is an odd place to begin a college baseball career for a guy that would begin or become a top 10 pick. Well, odd because you're talking about the military yeah. commitment. Now the 1 1. Fouled again, 1 and 2. He was the 10th pick. One pick behind Javier Baez to the Cubs, two picks behind Francisco Lindor to the Indians. Padres again down to their final strike. Tries to lay off and does. That one kicks away. So before this thing wraps up one more Cody Bellinger note maybe the most impressive one. Those five homers and 14 RBIs through 11 games. He's the seventh player in Major League history to have that. Five homers 14 RBIs in his first 11 games. 
Seventh. Seventh in the history of the sport. Do you think there'd be less than that? And that's pretty, I mean, what he's doing is impressive. Backhand Turner sets his feet. Bellinger can't corral it, and the game keeps moving. And Dave Roberts is going to have to make a change here. Making the length of this one on the heels of last night almost comical. It's a tough spot for Kenley though. Chris Hatcher comes in will try and finish the night in a 10 2 game. Season, Dave Roberts would have rather not had to go to an extra pitcher here, but Kenley Jansen's pitch count got too high, and so Hatcher will try to get the game's final out. Well, Myers 0 for 3, did walk his last time up. One of the four walks Clayton Kershaw has shoot tonight. Clayton is in position to win this game though it should move him. To five and two on the year to pop up if Barnes can find it. That'll be one pitch for Chris Hatcher to finish the job. A 10 to win. And as it seems like most nights are. Tonight's about Cody Bellinger. A grand slam. He knocks in five and is the seventh player in big league history to open his career with five homers and 14 RBIs in his first 11 games. He's definitely fun to watch. 